1958, a bulldozer driver for a logging company found large footprints in the mud. Other odd occurrences, like heavy objects being shifted around without apparent explanation, appeared to corroborate the existence of an unknown creature performing these tasks. The bulldozer driver got a cast of those footprints on the cover of first his local paper and then some of the largest outlets in the country. The creature purported to have made them was named Bigfoot for obvious reasons. In 2002, the family of the bulldozer driver's co-worker, Ray Wallace, made a statement that Wallace had been making the footprints using carved wooden feet. It was a hoax the whole time. The idea of a large reptilian creature living in Loch Ness originates from a 1933 account of a creature living in the lake. The only evidence produced comes from eyewitness accounts, which, of course, increased dramatically as soon as the first account had been detailed. Photography technology was early enough that any photo of a moving object in the water was going to be blurry, and allowed the viewer to project what they wanted onto it. By 2003, the technology existed to use sonar and satellite tracking to spot anything anywhere near the size of the creature that had been reported, and in a study by BBC using this technology, nothing was found, decisively proving that, at least now, there is no such creature living there. There are many theories that could explain what the photographs and accounts describe, but one very common explanation is that some people were seeing seals, and that, given the witnesses' eagerness to believe in the story of a monster, reports of their size were exaggerated with the story's retelling. No one can disprove that extraterrestrial life exists, and given the vastness of space and our statistical understanding of the likelihood of the conditions necessary for life, it may be safe to say that extraterrestrial life probably exists. But the commonly depicted human-like aliens with black eyes and hairless bodies originates from an incident in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. A weather balloon being used by the U.S. military to try and detect sound waves from Soviet nuclear tests crashed. The actual nature of this balloon was top secret, so the initial story the military gave about the incident was a little shaky at first, and they eventually landed on calling it a standard weather balloon, but by then suspicion had been raised. Being in the midst of a series of copycat UFO sightings, started by a reported sighting by Kenneth Arnold, this caught the public imagination briefly, and then little was made of it for 30 years, until a retired member of the Air Force staff that handled the situation began reporting that the crash was instead an alien spacecraft. This was quickly picked up by tabloids like the National Enquirer, which frankly is about as much disproof of a story as I ever need, but ultimately the biggest problem with the story is its inconsistency. Different sources make different claims about number of wrecks, number of alien bodies, appearance of those bodies, and many claims of autopsies or photographs of those bodies have been revealed to be hoaxes. For example, one such photograph was found to actually be a mummified child on display at that time in a museum. The autopsy footage was in fact fabricated, which the film producer admitted calling it a reconstruction of the actual events, but leaving the footage with no empirical evidence to back it up. Scientists in the fields of history and zoology, with the experience to speak to the plausibility of these claims, have soundly dismissed them all as hoaxes, conspiracy theories that prey on human psychology. They are at best made by people who want to believe that something they experienced was extraordinary and worth telling stories about, rather than admit that there were mundane explanations for them after all. At worst, they're capitalized on by con men looking to fabricate ideas that allow them to sell tabloid newspapers or get people to buy guides on photography expeditions to Loch Ness, or increase tourism to a small city in New Mexico, or get their ideas on network TV channels. In the spirit of the question of which of these cryptids is real, the answer is that none of them are real. With that in mind, I will be choosing Nessie for the Splatfest because it's the cutest one.